welcome to Aspire TV. I'm Jan Waldman, the host for today, and I'd like to introduce you to Seth Chitwood. He's co-creator of Angelwood Pictures. Welcome, Seth. Hi, how are you? I'm great. It's wonderful to have you today. Now tell me, when, when did you get started? Oh my how did you gosh, get started? How did I get started? When did I get started? Oh, well, you know, I started, my, well, my dad was very much involved with doing some stuff with Save the Bay, like, you know, mass media. He was the communications director. He would do a lot of filming with his camera. And we'd go out and do these kind of documentary shorts for YouTube, either doing like eel grass transplants or volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And from that, I started doing my own kind of documentary stuff. So I interviewed all the teachers at my local middle school and did something called Stress 101, all about school stress. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I kind of was very much into theater and plays. And I wanted to kind of write. So I just started doing these little skits kind of with friends. And then, then I was like, oh, let's do a series. So we did a series called The Dreamer with a lot of high school friends in 2009. I was about 16, 17 years old. And then it just kind of went into Red Circles and World's Worst Director and Family Problems and Lungs and In the Bedroom. And now here and we are. Which was your, which, when, which one was your first series, web series? The Dreamer was my first the one. The Dreamer. Yeah. And you did put that on online? Yeah, it was 13 episodes. Wow. I hope nobody That's researches great. it or looks it up. It was, <laughs> you know, it, was, it was the start of like, it was just a good, you know, all of my web series I find season after season is always like a learning experience. It's always right. uh, learning from my mistakes. And definitely The Dreamer was great, you know, great people. But it was like teenagers playing 45-year-olds. <laughs> and like it was just bloody and it wasn't really together. But it helped me kind of formulate something for Red Circles, which has been great. And then Tell me a little bit about Red Circles. So that was like the tr first true like professional web series. And it was, it came out in 2010. It was right when web series really weren't a thing. No one knew what a web series was. In fact, lots of people would be like, what's a web series? Where right now, like everyone's doing web series. So it was very early. We were in, we actually had gotten accepted into the LA Web Fest. We were one of like 108 at the time. Now it's a festival that offer, offers like 800 web series. Um, and it was like, it started off with, I had this really creepy dream about this woman in my parents' shower who was covered in blood. <laughs> And I kept having this like reoccurring dream, and I was like, I don't know what to do. So I just started writing it, mm -hmm. and then I kind of got a bunch of local kids from our college to kind of do that. And that was another one, like kids playing 40-year-olds <laughs> and just like not really working. And finally, like someone said, you know, there's a gr whole group of actors out there that are that mm -hmm. you know non-union actors that are looking for jobs for their resume and for their reels, and they're fine to do it for unpaid, and they'll come down to Barrington and they'll film. And I was like, oh, so I put something out there and then started getting in all those actors. And, and how did your first casting call go? Uh, and where well, did you hold, hold it? It used to be at my house, like, and my mom, like, she's gotten so much better, but she used to be like, she'd see like these like 40-year-old like women or men come in, like strangers, and she'd be like, I don't want these like random stranger adults in my house. Like, excuse me? Like, who are these people? Um, so that was a little scary, but um, yeah, I was, of course, like, I, I'd give them like a bunch of sides to read. I mean, I've learned so much over the years, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was great. No one's ever, like, I, we've seen like so many people on my house for auditions. No one's ever come back at like 11 o'clock at night to break in or, or stolen anything. <laughs> right. or, or tried well, they to are actors me, you know. and they're looking <laughs> yeah, they're to work. True. So, yeah. so was it difficult casting your first project? I mean, did you know where to go with it? Or were you just sort of randomly mm. thinking... They're good, they're not good. I have no idea if they're good. At, at one rate, I was just like, if they auditioned, they got in. I was like, you know what? <laughs> you know, especially because it's so new and I just loved, you know, that's what I always found that through all of my projects, it's always been the experience, the learning experience for me, especially since I was in college at the time. And I was still trying to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And it was kind of helping me formulate other upcoming projects. So right. I kind of was like, if they were good and they weren't crazy, you know, I'd, I'd cast them in the project. And, uh, <laughs> And it was great. Um, and then I kind of, you know, when I was in the second end of the second season of Family of uh, Red Circles, I mm -hmm. decided to write this series called Family Problems. And so I kind of put Red Circles kind of away, mm -hmm. and now focus on Family Problems. Tell me what happened next. Tell me who killed Jennifer. If you're ready. I'm ready. Had some exciting news with. Family problems and some award nominations. Can yeah. you tell us about those? Well, LA? Yeah, well, last year we went to the LA Web Festival for Family Problems. We won four awards. Um, we won, I won Best Writing. We also won nice. Best Series. And then we won um, Best Supporting Actress, which was um, Vicki Lynch, who played Jennifer, and Best Lead Actress, who was Teresa Chason. Mm -hmm who um, played the lead, Molly. Mm -hmm. And now this year, we're going back with like five nominations. Natasha Tolsky, Best Supporting Actress, John right. Samala, Supporting Actor, Wendy Harmon, Lead Actress nomination, um, Best Writing Again has been nominated, Best Series has been nominated. So we're, yeah, we're really excited about it. That's, yeah. that's wonderful. Now, do you see, foresee family problems 
going on? Or are you going to wrap it up? Or yeah, you don't the, know yet? the fifth season is the final season. Okay. We kind of reached, you know, we, at the end of the third season, we wrapped up all of Molly's storyline. We kind of, the whole show is about this um, family that buries a body in the woods and they're kind of coping with that and how the family kind of works together. And then it's, it's told in like two different parts. It's told like in the present 2012 days. And then it's also told in 2044, where the detectives have found the body, they're investigating the family, and they're trying to figure out who killed her. And uh, we kind of finally finished that storyline up at the end of the third season. And I just loved the cast I was working with, and I wanted to kind of push on. So we, we let some people go, and we kept a, a, a bulk of the other cast members, and we right. did... We're doing this like very, it's a much darker season. So like all about this church and how there's possibly this cult that works in this church that helps people get to these different levels where they want to be. And you get to see the origin of this Ellison character, which is played by Wendy. And you get to see the origins also of um, Elliot and Natasha. Hatalski plays Detective Elliot and kind of find out what happened to her and that she lost her husband and how it connects to this church. And it's mm -hmm. really great. great. Now, this is a drama. Do you, have you ever written any comedies? Well, I did a series called World's Worst Director. Um, we, it went on for two seasons. Um, it was great because originally I had written it, it was kind of like I was always coming home inventing because there's a lot of drama on sets. There's a lot of <laughs> exactly. issues with actors. There's a lot of issues with you know, just things that go wrong. I mean, every set, things go mm -hmm. wrong. So I would be writing this, like, journal at the end of every day of, like, mm -hmm. you know, what happened. And so I decided to kind of take the stress off and kind of put it into this, like, web show. Um, it was great because I uh, always wanted to kind of tell these stories and do a comedy mm -hmm. because I was doing these dark, bloody mystery dramas. And right. to take that tension off and do, like, a comedy was fun. So we had cast it, and originally um, the mean character was going to be based on me, and we had mm -hmm. gotten an actor to play that role. And then that actor just didn't really work out during like, the first day, so we, I, I stepped in and played myself, which was really fun, and we did that for two seasons. And What the? I made a bet with Penny. You what? We're both going to premiere our web series on the same day two months from now. Two months? And the first one to get to 1,000 views wins. What does that the mean? The loser... The loser has to quit the show business world for at least five years. Now, was it lighthearted to film this, or is it heavier to do the dramas? Or <sighs> it was, is it always funny it, on, it's on its own fun, level? It's funny for comedy because you get to just really fool around and everyone's mm -hmm. like, fun and stuff, and you know, we just get to laugh all day long. I mean, we still do that on the drama sets. Like, right. You know, you right. have to laugh when you're like killing someone and yes. with, a, with a candlestick in the, in the kitchen. You Getting know. the makeup on, the, yeah, the, the blood. Yeah, the blood everywhere, <laughs> you know, you have to laugh. But it was definitely like, you know, you come in and be like, there's no murder today, like there's no, there's no dark violence, no one's beating anyone up, like, you know, there's no right. R-rated material here, we can just laugh and, Now, yeah. do you, you do more dramas than comedy, yeah. but you have a very good sense of humor oh, because I know you. Thank you. So, do you see yourself doing any comedies down the road or? I don't know. Well, I'm trying really hard not to do any more projects because I've like literally overwhelmed myself with a <laughs> lot of projects. I mean, we're filming, um, we finished filming Family Problems. That's mm -hmm. about to come out. Uh, we're filming a new feature called Resurrection, that just the Resurrection of Victoria Wheeler that's literally just started production. And we're doing the fifth season of Lungs. So I can't really take on anything. But I did write um, a, another comedy possible web series, but I'm going to keep my mouth yeah, shut. Just, yeah, you just keep it on the <laughs> we'll down talk low. Later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was like, now, yeah. tell me a little bit about the resurrection of Victoria Wheeler. That sounds like a really interesting Oh, piece. yeah, we're really excited about it. And we just had our first phase of production, and it went really well. Um, and I have some really great people working on it. We have two wonderful producers, Gia Dill and Marty mm -hmm. Smith, who right. have just been my saviors. They taken over, they've done all of the pre-production work, okay. and they've been great to work with. Mm -hmm. We have a stellar cast. Wendy Hartman is leading it. David Affleck, um, Maria Nadapov mm -hmm. is in it. We have this wonderful woman, play, uh, Mary Fleming, who plays like this like psychic, sees dead people. Listen to my voice and put your trust in me, Victoria. Whatever happens, you must remember that. Trust me. Just keep breathing. The story is about this family who their son gets kidnapped by this mm -hmm. possible serial killer who takes people in for 14 days, like does God knows what with them, and then kills them. And sends the family like these weird taunting, you know, sends them a body part. It's like very creepy. <laughs> Dark. And it turned out that the husband's first wife was also victim of the same serial killer. It was just weird that he picked up on this same family and she was killed. And then one night, the wife comes back 
to the door. So, like, she rises from the dead, and she um, tries to help the family track down the serial killer with any information that she remembers before she died. So. Oh, that's great. So, that one sounds yeah. like a good one. And when <coughs> yeah. do you expect that to be completed? And is that a short, a web series? Oh, it's a full feature. Um, it was like it was like a really long script. I think it's gonna be over two hours. Um, and we're hoping to we're finishing productions in early May. And we're hoping to have it out in time for Halloween this year. Oh, that's, so that'll be that's a nice good Halloween timing. premiere. Yeah, that's great. Well, that yeah. sounds like a wonderful one. Now, tell me about lungs. This one I'm the most familiar with. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, do you want to say why you're so familiar I with I do it? work with Seth yeah. on lungs. Uh, yeah. Started off with this girl in back in the first season, mm -hmm. came out about a year and a half ago. Um, she was walking this, like, very, this fictional trail, but it was a kind of a trail to meditate, um, and she was going from, it was a trail from Newport, Rhode Island, all the way to Manhattan, New York, and you'd walk on this trail, and you'd walk for, like, you know, 15 miles a day, and you'd camp out on, in Tents, and so uh, we hate the tents. We have tent stories. <laughs> we have tent stories. But we won't get into it now, but it's just like I don't know if anyone's seen the movie Wild, but the when when Reese Witherspoon was struggling with that tent, it was like PTSD. When We've I was done that. Watching that, done that. Um, but uh, yeah, so she's walking on this trail and she's camping out. She's meeting other walkers on the way uh, to New York, and mm -hmm. she's kind of tr she came from a distressed past. She lost a child. And she was kind of very bipolar about the situation, and she was having a nervous breakdown. And so she decided to walk on this trail to just breathe, use your lungs. You know, that's mm -hmm. why it's called lungs, and kind of breathe in the uh, good, positive vibes and breathe mm -hmm. out the negative right. vibes. And so she meets people kind of along the way and starred um, Kimberly May, but then halfway through, Teddy Grace took over for that role. And these things happen. Yeah, which happens all the time. Yeah, it was great. Happens. It was a great learning experience. It's always every time we have anything mm -hmm. that comes up in our productions, it's always a really great learning experience. Um, Ellen Levinson was in that. Mm -hmm. She actually ended up winning um, a supporting actress, yeah, LA great. Web Festival. Fantastic. Yeah. Dave Sackles in it. Another great actor. actor yes. Paul Kandarian. Oh, I know. You're a wonderful cast. It was wonderful, yeah. Really good, good actors in your Great, projects. great actors, yeah. I mean, I was, there was, wasn't a single person I was like really upset to like work with. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was just, uh, I mean, Charlie Alejandro was in it. I'm trying, yeah, like Lisa that was Coleman. A, that was a fairly large fantastic cast, too. Cast. Well, smaller than Family Problems, but still like mm -hmm. a great cast. Mm -hmm. And so... Why did this all happen? Why? Cecilia killed herself. There was so much love between us. Why did she do this? Why did she do this to herself? Why did she do this to us? Why did she do this to me? Now, can you tell me a little bit about when you go out to L.A.? What's that going to be like? And, and who will be there? And Well, th I've gone three years now to the L.A. Web Festival. And this year, um, you know, I've gone with my parents. I, last year, I went with Teresa. Erica Derrickson went with us the year before that. But this year, like, like almost all the, ca like, a lot of cast members are going. Like, Wendy Hartman's going, Natasha Tolsky, John Samella, Carlin Fournier, um, Monica Savilakis is going, Maria Nadapov and her mom are going. Like, there's, like, so many That'll people from New England. So it'll be a lot of fun, you know, partying every day mm -hmm. and going out. It's just, it's great to get away, but it's also great to be at a... Uh, want to say like a meeting convention with a bunch of people that of do like what I do, exactly. literally like, like me. So it's really exactly. great for a week. There are people that are, I'm so excited to come back that I was like texting, like, oh, I'm so excited you're going to be there and we're going to have fun. No, they do, do they do it like the Academy Awards? You all sit in the auditorium and, and they announce the winners? Is that how they do it? Yeah. Or is it done well, differently? Well, the, the past years they kind of just would like, you know, they're, they're very much about giving a lot of awards out for mm -hmm. different categories. So they'd give about like, you know, eight or ten in each category. Mm -hmm. for So that was always great. You wouldn't know who they're going to select. Well, this year they did Differently, the nominations, and I think okay. only like two or three win in each category. Oh, so so they nominated like twenty people, and then the nominations like two or three or something. And, and so the number of sub submissions is very high. It's insane. Like it's very I, I mean, high. when I was, I, I think the leading actress drama, we were talking about it because Wendy was nominated. She's kind of seeing mm -hmm. who she was up against, and there was like twenty nominations, which right. is fantastic. But I, if you really think about it, after, after all the shows that are submitted, like she's up against possibly like. 600 possible people that right. could have been in which that is category. Amazing. Yeah, That's, which is awesome. You, you, sh you guys should all be very proud of yourself yeah. for what you've accomplished. Yeah, I'm this. excited. Now, the one we haven't touched on yet is in the bedroom mm. series. Tell mm. me about that. That was a different collaborative effort for you, and yeah. you brought in different people, and, and how did that work? Well, it all started because I was going to all these networking events. I was meeting people like Mike Messier or Chris Esper or mm -hmm. Carlin Fournier, and I kept saying to them, like, we should do a project together. This would be so much fun. And you always say, like, okay, great, and... It never happens. Never happens. You're right. always saying. So um, I was thinking of this really kind of interesting concept one night about it would be kind of fun to do these different episodes where it was just one story, seven minutes long, two people, and one location. And then it kind of turned into like, okay, two different people, a bedroom, seven minutes, every episode different. 
And I thought, because it would be very different because of those episodes would be, mm -hmm. you know, I thought, why not invite the people I've always right. wanted to work with? So I kind of put together this kind of group of people and kind of reached out to other writers and directors, invited them in, mm -hmm. kind of came up with this little board. And uh, we worked on it. We did it for we did eight days of production. We did 13 episodes just last year. You did we, that in eight days? Eight days, yeah. We just shot wow. two episodes a day. It was, it was insane. But, <laughs> but we were very, like, we you know, with the board, we wanted to be, make sure we were all even playing ground. We did, like, six hour days per, six hours per episode to be mm -hmm. shot. Same camera person. That's good. Same set designer, which was Mary Ronchak, who's a brilliant set designer. She is did a brilliant set designer. All 13 episodes. She's also designed all 13 bedrooms for me. If you ever watch Lung, she designed that beautiful shed that the witch is in. Right. That Natasha plays. Which I've witnessed. And, it's amazing. Yeah. And then she designed four of the um, rooms that you're going to see this season on Family Problems. Family Problems. It just made it so much better. Like, she literally took a blank white room mm -hmm. and turned it into this like massive yes. really nice yes. like it's amazing what she can bible do. study room or church room. yeah it's amazing. churches <laughs> sheds she can do whatever uh, yeah <laughs> she is insane but magnificent like i'm yes. so excited so she did all of the bedrooms and and uh you know and so that's kind of we wanted everyone to have this like equal playing ground and we kind of that's what we did and so that's nice is this what my future holds i'm so sorry dad i wasn't thinking you were a boy once you must have had this experience too here I am judging how you sleep. I know if Grandma had another bedroom, I would be in it. I'm really... <clears throat> and then yeah. did a different person direct each episode, or did you direct? Um, no, a different person for director. I directed okay. two, but uh, it was mo and Chris directed two as well, but everything else was by one, um, okay. and then different writers. I, but I wrote four of them, and then people like Charlie Alejandro wrote one, mm -hmm. Chris wrote one, uh, Kathleen Babu wrote one, and um, then, you know, just different kind of people helping out, different ADs, different, you know. Oh, but it was nice. mostly the same kind of crew. It was like Craves McLaws, who's who's amazing as well. She's done, she was kind of the pr production manager of mm -hmm. it. She's a fantastic woman, if it ever met her. Mm -hmm. um, Curtis Reed was very much a part of Chris Esper, was doing a lot of lighting and sound. Too. And so a really great group of people. And, and did you do it eight consecutive days or just did you spread out over It was over the weekends. We, we kind of felt like it was oh. like we did two weekends and we kind of did every, uh, for like, okay. you know, three weekends in a row, I think is what we did. Because we kind of felt like with everyone's schedule, yeah, it's really like we got to like Most of the actors we know work yeah. for a living. <laughs> well, so. true. But I mean, I think a lot of the time we were just like, and that's for me, is like I'd rather, you know, T like really stress and get like two weeks in a row of filming done and then you're done with the project and you can move on to the next thing. That's how I like to work. And now, how, who edited it? Was each one edited separately or? Uh, well, the DP, you? Alex Wachros and I, we, we traded off. So I edited about five and he, I think he had seven. Okay. And I think Chris Asper edited one as well, but yeah. So you d divided it up. That's divided good. up. It was completely yeah, kind of a group good. collaboration. It was the first kind of project where it wasn't just me editing and filming and directing and writing, and, mm -hmm. which is what I do. You could get a job too. I already work. I don't think being in a few independent films is classified as working. I'm not having this conversation. You're barely getting paid, Sarah. I'm getting my SAG card soon, Dylan. Now, speaking of funny things happening, can you come up with any, I'm mean, sure you have many stories of things that go wrong or things that, you know, you can laugh about, not cry laugh about. about <laughs> now? Like, you know, years later? No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Time man. has to pass, maybe, before you can laugh about some things. Yeah. But just... I don't know. I just, I, I always say it's funny to see some actors very entitled um, <laughs> on set. You know, it's always a shock to me. It's like, or it's always funny when actors say, like, when they, they're, they're on set as a background actor and they see these actors, these Hollywood actors being with, with their PAs and they're being fetching them water and a donut or something. Mm -hmm. And you're like, they're always saying like, I'll never be that. And then they get put in a situation on set where we have a PA one day and all of a sudden they turn into <laughs> this like monster actress. So <laughs> it's always yes. a shock to me. But it, it, is, it is a little shocking. Yeah, it's but, not Hollywood. But. Yeah, but for, I mean, I work with amazing people. There's like probably like three people in my life that of course I come across. But it's always like a lesson for me to like work with these like, Difficult actresses. Yeah, but, it um, happens. I, I think yeah. in any, any job or any field, yeah, you're going to have I'm, the difficult people. Yeah, but I mean, we, you know, funny stuff that's happened on set. I think the, well, I, I just have really supportive parents. I like really want to reiterate that my parents are amazing. Like, they let us film in the house. They've, you know, and we had one issue where I almost had like a complete nervous breakdown. I was in the, I was editing season two of Family Problems, and the external hard drive I was on broke. Ooh. And I couldn't get any of the footage off of it. And I was, it was really funny because I was backing stuff up onto another external hard drive. Mm -hmm. But that footage that I was editing from, I was like, because like, it takes hours to back up. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'll back this up tonight when I finish editing. 
and it like it was like God was like was like no, no we're gonna screw you over. The universe was like not happening. So I'm like literally like in a fetal position crying because oh. I was like four episodes lost in, in oh. space, and I was like holy oh, that's moly. Terrible. But my dad like took it, got it fixed, and for a, I won't say how much, but for a so substantial had, amount of money, and he took a professional and did it, and it was no problem, like no. And I've always been very thankful that for their support and mm -hmm. and letting me just continue to do what I like to do and. And uh, yeah, they're they're great. So yeah, they've uh, you need support to make it in this in yeah. this industry, in the industry anyway. Of course, and yeah. So yeah. anyway, Seth, is how if people want to contact you or watch um, your shows, how would they go about doing that? Well, it's very easy. My production company is called Angelwood Pictures. Um, A N G E L W O O D. It's mm -hmm. actually because my me and my friends started back in 2009. Her last name was Angelo, and my name is. Chitwood, so Angelwood came together. It's very nice. I like and that. And you can just go to angelwood.com and you can see all the web series, all the, series, the, all the you... information. Yeah. Okay, that's great. You can follow great. me on Twitter at Moses4321 as well. That's and great. Tumblr, Angelwood Pictures at tumblr.com. Oh, you're connected. Yeah. That's good. good. Well, thank you so much, Seth. It was a joy to have you here today. Thank you for inviting me. And um, thank you for watching Aspire TV.